All right, got something interesting here today I haven't done a video on before. I haven't done a video in a while. Sorry about that, but it's just the way it goes. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, I got these 316 stainless steel plates right here. They got a number four brush finish on them already, so they're pretty sexy looking. So I got them masked off right here so when I clamp on them, I don't potentially scratch them. So we're tapping some eight millimeter by 1.25 tap holes right there. They're already all drilled out, got them drilled already. We're gonna tap them using the Tapmatic tapping head here. The tap is in the head, ready to go. I've already done one. I'm using a high spiral tap so the chips come up and out of the hole. The holes are blind, obviously. So 316 stainless steel blind holes. E, that's a potential recipe for disaster a lot of times. So we, I go up one on the tap drill. Make it a little easier for the tap. I like form tapping too. I'll form tap. I'd do some test holes before I just go and form tap in these plates right here because they're super expensive. I'd hate to screw one up. So it was a little funky trying to get it set up here because they're kind of tall. So I got this big knee, that big angle knee. You might have seen it in another video that I use. I used that when I took the uh, broken studs out of the uh, Holly Davidson head. But anyways, I got that right there. So I, I figured, oh, no big deal. I'll just clamp it right to that and I'm good to go. Yeah, well, the problem is, is that the part doesn't stand off of the back wall of that knee far enough to clear the diameter of this head and put this tap on center for the hole. So I had to space it out. I said, all right, well, I'll take these plates that I got right here, these things, these plates, they're actually big honking vice jaws that I made. I could screw them right into the uh, vise and use them as a, an angle plate when I got small pots to do. So I said, all right, I got two of them, a right hand one, left hand one. I'll attach them. I'll screw them right to that, that other big angle knee thing I got right there. Space it off a little bit, no problem. Have clearance for the tap to come in and whatnot, you know. This guy right here, gotta clear that. I put it on there and then I'm like, damn. The height is not, is, is, it doesn't jive properly to where I can make everything work and clear this thing. So I had to take the whole setup apart, take it all down, all apart, and then put some parallels. It's actually 01 tool steel, Bostock. I've stuck those, I stuck that Bostock back there. They're pretty good this way, thickness wise. So I'm using them as parallels but it's just Bostock right there. And I stuck them behind those plates that I have and reset it up another inch and, well, I don't know, it's oversized stock, so one inch 50. Another inch and 50 off of the back wall of that big angle plate. And voila, I now have enough clearance for the tapping head to be able to come down clear the back of this thing and not have any smash ups and be able to tap my holes to the proper depth. It was a little combination. I had to try different things here and there and whatnot, so, but that's what we got. So I got these plates attached to the knee, sitting on those parallel rises to space it off the back of this some more. I got that all attached there. I could only use one hole in this plate right here. See, I got tap hole, I got holes right here. That would be where I'd screw it to my vise. I got one here, I got one here. And I drilled dual patterns on it. So I got another set over this way too, going this way and this way. That way I can put those plates either this way or that way on the vise and use them in either orientation. So I could only get one hole to line up. So I got one hole, one hole in there, screwing this plate to that big knee in the back there. And then I gotta use these cant twists to pinch it and hold them in place. So I got one bolt right through there. I can't twist, I can't twist. I have one bolt through there. Obviously it's behind this plate. Through there, a can't twist and a can't twist. So that's how all of that is sandwiched together on this big angle knee right here. So all that talking, and I put this plate on, I got a little tiny clamp right here, clamped to this plate that I'm using as a stop. You can see right there, that's what I'm bumping against. 
because I got six of these things to do. So I want to be able to repeat the setup. So I put it against the plate, bump it against the stop, can't twist, I mean, uh, t uh, the Staco, snap it in, the Staco, snap it in, and that holds it in place. But I wouldn't rely on that alone here. Like I said, I don't want this pot to move. So I found a hole, 3 8 hole in that back plate, put a uh, threaded rod in there. I got my clamp here with a nut and a washer, creating pressure this way, pinching it really tight. So that thing's not gonna go anywhere. And like I said, I, I mask these things off to not scratch them. I got masking tape on the clamp as well. The tape's about 5,000 thick, so I put a couple layers of it on there. It softens the, uh, the compression there, so we don't make no, put no acne marks in it. Same thing, back side of these plates, I mask them all off. So when they bank up against the clean surface, I make sure it's clean, clean it up, no chips, feel it really nice and smooth. Put that plate, bump it, the Staco them in, put this on, lock it up, and then I'm ready to tap my holes. I got the depth set already. I gotta go an inch deep. It's kinda deep, but that's what I'm doing, inch deep. I hate going back and having to finish tapping by hand. So I got this thing going 20 turns right to the bottom. I drilled extra deep, so I got clearance on the bottom. Don't have to worry about bottoming out. Chips come up and out of the hole with that type of tap right there, so we got no pack up in the bottom of the hole. And what I do is, is I'm using 316 is tough stuff, it's tough. So I got a special tap in there, specially made for doing stainless steel. And I use Molly D, blind holes. I filled each hole with Molly D before I tap it. So it's gonna have a full reservoir of oil all the way to the bottom of the hole. Usually I just let the tap sit over it, brush it on, let it fall in, fill up. When it's full, I tap the hole. I went ahead and I filled them all up here for uh, efficiency of this video. We're already seven minutes in. But anyways now, let's see if I can tap these holes here. So that you can see this baby in action. Put a little more oil on it. Working one-handed here. Like I said, I already filled them with oil. So that way it has a, it's like flood coolant almost, you know, without having flood coolant. All right, so here we go. We're gonna tap this, see what happens. Here we go. In the hole we go. Back out a little bit, go back in, back out. Boom, there it is. Next one. We got chips, all the chips came out. Working one handed here. I'm gonna stop it, take the chips off. Eight six seven five three zero oh, nine. Listen to some groovy music. Five three zero oh, nine. All right, here we go. We do another one here. Back it out. Go back in a little bit. Come on out. Nice. I'm gonna shut the spindle off. Take them chips off. Clear them chips out of the way. Don't want to take them back in the hole with me again. Next one. Put some oil on there. Saturate that baby. Everything works better with the lubrication. Here we go. Third hole. Back it out. Go back in a little bit. Come on out. Come on out and play. All right, that's that. Spindle off. See that tap? High spiral tap right there. Chips come right up and out of the hole when you use one of those. There it is. Eight millimeter by 1.25 tap holes and 316 stainless steel blind holes, one inch deep. One inch plus a little extra. <laughs> 